In my last video, I showed you how you can make a whole spectrum of colors out of red, green, and blue light. Well, this time we're gonna take a look at how can we reproduce those colors using cyan, magenta, and yellow ink. So let's dive right in. Well, when you print, all we wanna do is we wanna find a color of ink that only absorbs red light, then another color of ink that only absorbs green, and another that only absorbs blue. And therefore, using differing amounts of those three inks, we can do the equivalent to controlling how much red, green, and blue light is reflected off of a sheet of paper, and how much is instead absorbed by the ink. So let's figure out what color of ink absorbs red light. The way we can figure that out is with the same document I showed you how to make. Just make it so the circles do not overlap to begin with. And then if we wanna see what it looks like when you have no red, where all the red has been absorbed, but the other two colors have not been affected, then take green and blue and just overlap them. And when you do, you see what it looks like when you have a lack of red, but you have not messed with the other colors. So cyan ink, the reason why every single printing press that prints full color normal photographs and every inkjet printer that's capable of printing a color photograph has that color of ink in it is because that color of ink only absorbs red light and that's its sole purpose in life. And therefore we vary the amount of cyan ink and we're really varying the amount of red light that's being absorbed. Then we need to find another color of light, a color of light that's gonna absorb only green light. To figure that one out, let's grab blue over here and let's make it so it overlaps red because then we'll have the other colors and we'll have a lack of green. So there we go. The reason why there's magenta ink in your inkjet printer and on a printing press is because magenta ink's sole job in life is to absorb green light. If you ever see magenta on a sticker or anything, know that that just means there's no green light bouncing off of that surface. And so we can vary the amount of magenta ink we print with to vary how much of the green light we're gonna absorb. Then the only thing we need to do now is we know how to get a color for red, a color for green, and now we just need a color for blue. So we need a color that was gonna make it so we have no blue light whatsoever. So just take this color and overlap it with that one. And that's when you see the color of ink that absorbs blue light. And that's yellow. Its sole job in life is to absorb blue light. Use 100% yellow ink and you've absorbed 100% of the blue light that was falling on the sheet of paper you're viewing. Use 50% of it, and you're allowing 50% of the blue light to bounce off the sheet of paper and enter your eyes. So then we could create a similar document to this one, but make it in CMYK mode. CMYK mode has to deal with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. This document is very similar to the one I showed you how to make. The only difference between it and the one I showed you how to make is when I created a new document. I did just a few things differently. First off, I told it to create it in CMYK mode instead of RGB. And I told it to have a white background instead of black. Then, when I drew the circle that we had, at the top of my screen, instead of choosing white for my color, I chose black. Then I drew the circle. I switched to the move tool just like I did before. And just like before, I duplicated this layer two times by typing Command J, which is Control J in Windows, twice. With the other document, I named those layers red, green, and blue. But in this case, I'm gonna name them cyan, magenta, and yellow. And previously with the other document, I double clicked beyond the name. So over here in this empty space, and I messed with these checkboxes. Well, those checkboxes match the mode your picture's in. And this time I'm gonna make the top layer only affect cyan. And I'm gonna go to the next layer, double click beyond its name. And I'm gonna make it only affect magenta by turning off all the other checkboxes. And then we have one more, I'll double click to the right of its name and I'm gonna make it only work with yellow. 
And now we have the same kind of document just talking about cyan, magenta, and yellow. So now if I click on this circle and I drag, I can drag one color over and I click on this circle and drag, I can get the other color. And now you can see cyan, magenta, and yellow. And you're welcome to drag these till they overlap. And you'll see when you put the cyan and the yellow together, you get green. Well, that's one of the colors we made our image out of originally when we're in RGB mode. Then if we move the yellow over here, you're going to get red, which is one of the colors we made the image out of when we made it out of RGB. And then finally, let's drag this one over here. And that's when you're going to see blue. And so we can recreate red, green, and blue using cyan, magenta, and yellow. But notice when you overlap cyan, magenta, and yellow at 100% apiece. So right here you have 300% ink total. This doesn't really look like black. It's actually kind of a muddy brown. And that's an issue with CMYK mode. It's not an issue with Photoshop. It's an issue with the purity of these inks and just not being able to get them to be pure enough and also get them to be cheap enough where we could print in volume. So let's see how we deal with the fact that cyan, magenta, and yellow combined doesn't quite produce black. If we were to make text out of just cyan, magenta, and yellow, the problem would be first off when you combine those together, the registration on the printing press isn't perfect between the colors. So imagine if you and you were reading a magazine or a newspaper, the little bitty text that you were reading in an article had all these little color halos around the edge of it. Well, that's not going to make small text easy to read. We could make these colors perfectly aligned. All I'm going to do is select all three of those layers and here I'll say align horizontally, align vertically. Well, the problem now is this text isn't all that dark. And so if we use 100% cyan, magenta, and yellow, it doesn't really look like black. So for text, we like to use 100% black ink. That's darker than the three colors of colored ink combined, and it costs less because black ink is the cheapest ink out of all of them. And instead of having 300% ink here, which would take longer to dry, we only have 100% ink there, and so this is going to dry faster. But you got to be careful because if you just make text in CMYK mode and you make it black, it's not going to be using only black ink. Because if you go over here in your tools and you hit this little icon to reset your foreground and background colors so it produces black, and then you put in text, what you're going to end up having is this. This is the version, and this might look very similar to this one that only uses black ink, but it's not. Let's look at the difference in these three versions. To do that, I'm going to open the info panel. The info panel right here will show me how much ink is underneath my mouse at all times. So if I go first to the text at the bottom right, and you look in the info panel, you see it's using 100% black ink and nothing else. If I go to the version over here on the left, it's using 100% cyan, magenta, and yellow, and no black. But the one over here is what I would get when I just reset my foreground color to black and I put some text in. And instead of getting what the other two are showing, here's what we get. Look at that. We have some of all the colors of ink. By putting all the colors of ink in there, this can look even darker than just black text. You might think that'd be a good thing to get your text to look really, really dark. But it's not a good thing. Because notice the percentages. None of them are at 100. Well, if you were to look closely at a newspaper, let me show you how that would actually be reproduced. In order to reproduce those lower percentages of inks, it would reproduce it looking like this. But why does it look like that? And that's because a printing press is only capable of printing solid black, solid magenta, solid cyan, and solid yellow. It can't truly make a percentage. In order to get you the equivalent to a percentage, it uses something known as a halftone. Here is the cyan ink and how it would try to simulate less than 100%. Here's magenta and Here's yellow, and then we have black. It's all of these 
combined together. And that's going to cause it so the edge of all your text is going to not look like a solid edge. It's just not a good idea. And that's why we use black only text. Whenever you type text into something other than Photoshop, like InDesign, it's usually only going to print with black ink. But Photoshop doesn't really know you're working with text when it comes to choosing colors, and so it's using what it would use in a photograph. In a photograph, this would look fine if the rest of the image was also photographic, so you didn't have any crisp edges. So if that whole thing was printed with black ink, instead of the halftone, we would get a nice crisp edge on our text. So there you go, you should have an idea now of how we reproduce the red, green, and blue light you see on your screen when we print using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. Next time, I'm going to show you an idea of how we create black ink when we're converting an RGB image to CMYK, so you can have a little idea of the process.